Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord for his grace and his mercy, his love and his kindness that he has shown toward each and every one of us. Thank God for another day's journey, him allowing us to come together one more time. I can truly say if it had not been for the Lord who is on our side, there's no telling where we would be. We want to welcome each and every one of you again to another uh, broadcast of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, uh, Erie PA 501 West 31st Street, where I am the lead pastor, Bishop Frankie L. Quinn, and we thank God certainly for our lovely wife, Lady Tracy Quinn, and all of our leadership team that is here at Christian Ministries and all of our members and all of our virtual family. We certainly do thank God for you. We thank God for your labor of love and we thank God uh, that you have tuned in and that we are a part of the body of Christ. I certainly do thank and praise the Lord for all that he is and all that he is doing for us. And as we get ready to Go before the Lord in prayer. I uh, certainly want to remember uh, the Carson family. We want to uh, remember those that uh, have suffered loss and those that have uh, enduring hardship and pain and suffering. We understand that uh, tests and trials may come and things that uh, also come upon us uh, by our own efforts and by our own miscalculation and just decisions uh, can lead to uh, a deeper depth of trials and tribulations that uh, otherwise wouldn't have been experienced through better decision making. So we certainly do pray uh, for those that are struggling in areas of direction. We want to pray for those that need to internalize the Word of God so that they can live out the true meaning of every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. And as we get ready to go before our, uh, the Lord in our Bible study on today, we certainly do want to uh, uh, pray uh, for heads of state, those that are in power and authority, pray for our leaders, that we ourselves would be able to live a quiet, peaceable life. And certainly want to pray for those that are overseas and where that bombing was in uh, Beirut. We want to pray for those uh, that uh, have been affected by that. Um, and we certainly do want to pray uh, for the coming of the Lord and that we'll be prepared and ready uh, for when he comes. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We certainly thank you, Lord, for this Bible study. We want to pray for men and women and children everywhere that you would save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. We pray, Lord, for leaders. We pray for men and women and children. We pray for those that are suffering and that are going through. We ask you, Lord, that you send your comforting spirit, send your anointing that encourages, send your anointing that breaks yokes, send your anointing that heals, set free, and deliver. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for the Bible study on tonight. We ask you to open up our understanding, help us to receive of your word with meekness to the saving of our souls. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, we certainly do give God glory and honor and all the praise on today, amen, because he is our strength, he is our shield, he is our rock, and we thank God that he is our rock and our, and our salvation. I want you to turn with me uh, in our Bible study on today to uh, Matthew chapter number five, and I want to uh, complete that study, uh, that particular chapter uh, that Jesus uh, fulfilled or he preached what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount is very dynamic because it talks about uh, Jesus and his disciples and how his disciples ought to operate in the kingdom. And he started it out talking about the Beatitudes and then he uh, made a bold statement and said that because you are a part of the kingdom and you practice my sayings or my laws and I am your Lord, therefore 
you are the salt of the earth. And he said that ye are also the light of the world. And being the salt, the salt preserves. Salt preserves. It is used as a preservative. And it is used to preserve uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Each of us, each of the followers of Christ, should have the gospel within us. We should be dwelling and having the gospel within us and in our hearts and in our minds and, and have that as our mission statement and our purpose to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, also salt influences. So we should uh, be influencing others to be followers of Christ. In other words, we should be fulfilling the Great Commission, which is to go out and to uh, propel people to become Christians. And also, uh, he called us the light. Light guides. Light guides others and leads in a path of righteousness. Light illuminates. Light also gives life. And light, light also gives understanding. So we, as his living epistle, as the living epistle of Jesus Christ, the living word, our very lifestyle should be uh, guiding people and leading people and giving understanding uh, to people to how to live holy, to live a righteous life. And we should uh, take what Jesus said uh, verbatim in this respect, that we are somebody in Christ Jesus that uh, the scripture said if the salt has left lost its savior it is thenceforth good for nothing to be trodden under the foot of men so if we lose our purpose that and we lose our influence then what good are we to the kingdom that's basically what Jesus is saying so your purpose and your influence is key to, to, to Christ and to living a life that is beneficial to him. You always want to put yourself in a position where you're beneficial to the Lord. You don't ever want to be unbeneficial to him. And uh, uh, as we live our lives, if, as we live our lives, we should not live our life apart from the Lord. So Jesus, um, when he's teaching about the Sermon on the Mount, I want to pick up now on, on that, starting with uh, verse uh, 17. Uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. And Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 says, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. And this particular statement uh, that Jesus is making is so dynamic that it literally sets the tone and the pace for the rest of Matthew 5, 6, and 7. This here is a truly a key verse that uh, bears uh, our need to understand. He's saying, think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. And the law and the prophets represent the entire Bible. The law is the first five books of the Bible, which is called the Torah. And the law of uh, the prophets are, are the prophets, uh, the rest of the book of the Old Testament that deals with the prophets. And notice what Jesus says. He says, think not that I have, not, I have come to destroy he didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. He didn't come to tear it down. He came to give illumination. He came to give light. He came to give revelation into what the meaning of God's word is. And that's very important because the Pharisees and the religious leaders of Jesus' day, they were giving people misunderstanding. They were misinterpreting the word of God for their own benefit to keep the people bound, to keep the people under oppression and depression. Uh, but Jesus, notice what he said, I came uh, uh, to, to give people freedom, 
uh, the, the Bible says, and it talks about uh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Jesus came to liberate. He came to set the captive free. He came to recover the sight of the blind. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He came uh, to, to preach his gospel or the gospel of God. Now notice uh, what he said, I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Uh, everything that the law, everything that the prophets have said about Jesus, he came to fulfill it. Uh, he was the only one, Jesus is the only one that could fulfill the righteous commandments of the law. Everybody have come fallen short. Everybody else before Jesus have not was not able to fulfill uh, the righteousness of the word of God to its perfection. Uh, the scripture uh, tells us uh, about Jesus and how he came to the world. He came uh, uh, without sin as the Lamb of God. He came as righteous. He came as holy. And when he died on the cross, he noticed what he said, it is finished. He, he came to give his life as a ransom because it was written of him in the prophets that he would do that. He, he lived a lifestyle that was holy and righteous. And he, he also fulfilled the, the, the law concerning the ceremonial laws as far as the sacrifices and the offerings. And we could go on and on uh, about what Jesus did, but um, I'm just trying to give you an understanding that uh, Jesus fulfilled what was in the law. So verse 18, it says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not uh, one jot or one tittle uh, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Jesus is saying that the, uh, the Old Testament is necessary. The Old Testament is valuable to the point it, it, its value is uh, uh, the very smallest uh, uh, iota, the very smallest period, the very smallest dot um, shall be fulfilled. Uh, it won't pass away until all is fulfilled. So Jesus is promoting the Old Testament. He's promoting uh, the word of God. The, and so we should not negate its value either. Uh, uh, 1 Timothy chapter number 3 verse uh, 16 says that the, uh, that the word of God, the word was written with inspiration and it is profitable to, for doctrine, for proof, for correction and instruction in righteousness that the man or woman of God may be thoroughly finished, furnished, prepared unto every good work. So as we begin to, to see here that that, that we should value the word of the Lord. We should value God's word. Why? Because we're the light and we are the salt of the earth. Now notice uh, verse 18. He says, Verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away. Now we know heaven and earth is going to pass away. And that's going to pass away uh, 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 a while from now. i <laughs> just put it that way. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Lord. Uh, notice what he says. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till everything that is written is fulfilled. Everything that is written in this Bible, in this 66 books, have to be for fulfilled before we enter into a new heaven and a new earth. All right? So verse, uh, then let's move on to verse 19. It says, Whosoever therefore shall break uh, one of the least uh, of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now here Jesus is giving a comparison. Uh, he's saying uh, that uh, people must not only be a hearer of the word, but they also must be a doer of the word. 
And he's saying that those who are going to be great in my kingdom or great in the kingdom of the Lord, they must also be able to teach and do, teach and do, teach and do, and not live a life as a hypocrite, uh, teaching it but not doing it. Uh, this, notice what he said. He said, whosoever therefore shall break one of the, of the least of the commandments, one of the least of the commandments, uh, uh, he shall be called least in the kingdom, notice, of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we ought to focus on. If you're going to be great in God's kingdom, you've got to not only teach this word, uh, but you've got to perform this word. And in order to teach this word, you have to be a student of the word. Because notice what Jesus said. It goes back to what he said, you are the light, you are the salt. And, and in order to be the salt and the light, you must know the word of God. Paul said, uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's imperative and it's important, uh, beloved, that we know the word of God and that we also live by its precepts. We're able to uh, teach it and also able to live it out. And you can't live it out on your own. You have to live it out through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers you to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now, notice then, let's go, let's move down to notice uh, verse number 20. He says, for I say unto you, except your righteousness it shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now I want to read that again. Notice what he said, except your righteousness uh, shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, that's Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 20. What Jesus is literally saying here is uh, uh, the righteousness. You have to exceed the righteousness of the scribe and of the Pharisees. And I just want to suffice it to say in a nutshell that the problem Jesus had with the scribes and the Pharisees, they were more interested in the outward appearance. They were more interested in looking good and smelling good and, and, and being perceived as good. Uh, but inwardly, they, they, they were raving wolves, so to speak. Inwardly, Jesus, he rebuked uh, a lot of them. He said, you're full of adultery. You're, you're full of mischief. And, and, and he, was, he was talking about them. Um, not necessarily full of adultery, but he was saying that they were uh, 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 whited sepulchers, but um, uh, uh, outwardly they were whited sepulchers, but inwardly they were as dead man bones. He made reference to that uh, in the scripture. And Jesus, he, he chided them because they uh, 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 were bending God's law to fit their own advantage and do things um, to make themselves look good. He got on them about prayer, praying with long robes on in the middle of the street. Uh, uh, when you're fasting, not fasting in secret, but, but um, making yourself look pitiful, things like that. So they, that's what Jesus is saying. He is focusing in on what, what is in you. Uh, not on the outward appearance. God doesn't judge man by the outward appearance, but God judges the heart. Hallelujah. God looks on the inward man. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. He's, he wants the focus on the inward man, not on the outward appearance. People can hypocrite. They can uh, uh, pretend that they're righteous and holy, uh, but uh, when they get by themselves or when they, uh, their thoughts and their deeds and their actions 
uh, prove otherwise. So we see here then, uh, verse number 20, he said, For I say unto you, except your righteousness, your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Basically, Jesus is saying, don't be a hypocrite. <laughs> don't be a pretender. Don't, don't uh, walk around like you're holy and righteous, but inwardly you're not. Uh, my God, don't be an apostate. Um, uh, somebody whose body that's in the church, uh, the physical building, but your mind is somewhere else. Don't You don't want to be that way. Thank you, Lord. Uh, notice what he says. Then verse 21, he says, Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time. And Jesus is, uh, verse 21, Jesus is, he's literally, I love it here. He's kind of, uh, he's, he's coming at them, but he's doing it in a polite way. You've heard, uh, notice what he says. You've heard that it was said by them of old time, meaning that uh, you have been taught these things and you were taught them incorrectly. Uh, that's basically what Jesus is saying. Uh, people of old time uh, have taught you the precepts of God, but they taught you them incorrectly. Uh, so he says there, thou shall not kill. You heard uh, the word of God said, thou shall not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But now Jesus is giving uh, the right interpretation. Verse 22, he says, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Reka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thy fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. So what Jesus is literally saying here is that, uh, remember, we said it goes back to the inward uh, state of a man, the inward state of a woman. It goes back to one's motives and one's judgments and that, that you are, that, that who you are inside, your spirit soul. Thank you, Lord. Now notice what he says. He says, you have heard uh, that it was said by them of old time that thou shalt not kill and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Now here Jesus, verse 22, is going to the heart of the matter. What causes an individual to kill? Uh, and, that, and that is anger. Notice, he says, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother uh, shall be in danger of the judgment. Uh, the scripture says, be angry, but fear not. Uh, uh, be angry, but sin not. And then it says that anger lies in the bosom of the fool. Uh, anger is an emotion that, that we cannot avoid. Things are going to get us angry. But Jesus is teaching self-control. Don't allow your anger to control you. Our emotions control us. Jesus is saying, don't allow your anger to control you. Don't allow your emotions to control you. And if you do, you're going to be in danger of the counsel or in danger of the judgment. So whatever you uh, reap, ye shall sow. So you cannot allow your anger to fester within you because anger will turn into wrath and unbridled wrath will, 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 will hurt people. <laughs> will not only hurt people, but it will kill people. So Jesus is teaching, you know, you've got to control your inner emotions. Notice what he says in this further verse. And whatsoever ye shall say, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Reka. That word Reka means empty head. Um, so uh, he's literally saying, you're reverting to name calling. Um, we should not be angry and start calling people names, uh, cussing people out. Uh, that's not the Christian way. That's not the way of the Lord. Uh, uh, calling people names, 
and cussing people out. And all of that comes through your anger. You've got to control your anger. You've got to be, the Bible says, be temperate in all things. Thank you, Lord. So have your body be uh, self-controlled in everything. Thank you, Lord. Now notice, he says, shall be in danger of the council. And that means the, the leadership. If you round here cut, telling people off, uh, thank you, Lord, and cussing at people, uh, uh, he said, you're going to be in danger of the leadership, that you shall be rebuked for your actions. Now notice, notice, he says, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. And when, when he's talking about here, uh, he's saying that you should not... Uh, uh, judge people's character, uh, calling them a fool. Uh, what he's referring to is, is you looking at somebody's character and you tearing them down. Why? Because people were created in the image and the likeness of God. I want to say this. You've got to really think in your mind. Uh, Jesus uh, was asked to ask the question, uh, what are the twoest Two great commandments. And the answer was that you've got to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and, and, and spirit and soul. And then, in your might. And then it says, what's the second? To love thy neighbor as thyself. So love, you've got to love God, and you've got to love people. And uh, you cannot judge and 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 look down on people uh because you're angry because you're upset and mistreat people if you do that then you're going to be in danger of hell fire my god you've got to love people because you are sent to help people you are sent to uh to help people get delivered and throughout the teaching of jesus he talks about that uh, if your enemy hungers, if, if you're persecuted for righteousness sake, he tells you uh, uh, to rejoice and to be exceedingly glad when men revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. And don't seek after uh, retaliation and things such as that. Uh, so, so there's a way uh, we've got to show love because love is the calling card of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's how people know that you are his disciple. Uh, uh, because you love them that hate you, that despitefully use you and mistreat you. My God. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. And, and through his spirit, through his anointing, through keeping his commands, through transformation, you'll be able to do what I'm saying that this word of the Lord is telling us to do. Now notice then, uh, verse 23, hey, glory. He says, therefore, now therefore is building upon what he has already said about uh, uh, how to treat your brother and sister. Notice what he says, therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and rememberest that thy brother has uh, aught against thee. If you come to the altar and pray and remember that somebody has uh, a problem with you, uh, if somebody has an aught against you, uh, notice what he says. He says, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Uh, notice the relationship. You can't come to God uh, with a free and clear heart knowing that your brother or your sister has a problem with you. Uh, uh, this, this scripture really deals with when it's talking about reconciliation, it's talking about forgiveness. It's talking about treating people right. You've got to treat people right. You can't, if you're going to be the light, if you're going to be the salt, you can't mistreat people. Hallelujah. You've got to, you've got to do what is right 
all times, 100% of the time, 100% of the day. You got to do what's right because you're responsible. God holds us responsible. So if, if our brother and sister has a problem with us, it uh, doesn't matter if uh, 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 you did them no wrong. It uh, doesn't matter if, uh, 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 if you didn't hurt them intentionally, but if they got the problem, thank you, Lord. He says, before you come to him, uh, go and be reconciled. You know, the reason, uh, the, the reason why the Lord has gotten us to go over these, uh, this Sermon on the Mount is because, you know, we can become lax on our responsibilities uh, of the kingdom. Uh, there's, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of that way is death. You can't do what you think is right. You've got to do what the Lord says is right. And in order to do that and live by kingdom principles, we have to follow after what Jesus has said. If you're going to call him Lord, then you have to submit yourself uh, to the teachings and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So if somebody has a problem with you and you come to the altar and remember that so-and-so had a problem with you, you've got to leave your gift at the altar and go be reconciled. That's why the Bible says that he has literally given us the ministry of reconciliation. The scripture tells us, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. All right, my God, I can go on and on, but let me move on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, verse verse uh, uh, 23, he says, therefore, if if thou bring thy gift to the altar and remember that thy brother hath, uh, thy brother hath an ought or problem against thee, he says, leave thy gift before the altar, go thy way, first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Verse 25, and this, this goes along with it. Notice what he says, agree with thy adversary quickly. While thou art in the way with him, least at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou, and thou be cast into prison. Now, uh, verse 24 and 25, they go together. Thank you, Lord. Because if your brother has an ought against you, he may want to take you to the court of law, to settle the matter. So what Jesus is saying is, is before all of that happens, before uh, 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 you someone takes you to court, try to settle it out of court. You know, try to get the thing right before it even goes before the judge. Because if it gets to the judge, uh, he's saying that you won't come out of that until you have paid the uttermost farthing or the uttermost penny. Thank you, Lord. So uh, 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 before, if you notice what he said, he says, agree with thine adversary quickly. If you, if a person has a problem with you, uh, agree with them, you know, quickly. You know, settle the matter quickly before it gets to court, before it gets to uh, a legal proceeding. My God. Hey, my God, Holly, I'm helping somebody here today. Thank you, Lord. You ain't got to uh, let things fester. You ain't got to let things uh, uh, get out of hand. You know, uh, uh, you got to settle things, get things straight before it gets out of hand. Now, notice what he says. Agree with thine adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. And not that while thou art in a way, way with him, meaning that, while you are headed uh, to a magistrate. So the reference is before you get to the magistrate, uh, um, uh, uh, settle it 
least at any time that adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer or the sheriff or the bailiff <laughs> and thou shalt uh, uh, be cast into prison. Notice verse 26. He says, for verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till I have paid the uttermost farthing or the last penny of your bond or the last penny of what is owed to uh, that individual. My God, my God. Now, let's move on. Verse 27, he says, For you have heard that it was said by them of old time that thou shalt not commit adultery. And uh, he's saying that, once again, that when he says, ye have heard uh, that it was said of them of old time, he's saying literally in a, in a subtle way, they only gave you the surface level of the scripture. Jesus says, I'm giving you the true meaning <laughs> of the word of God. Hallelujah. So he says that it was said that thou shalt not commit adultery. We know that adultery is illegal sex, uh, especially uh, 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 between a married couple. Now notice. But I say unto you that whosoever, uh, notice, that looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery already in his heart. So what Jesus is saying here is that, that, that uh, 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 the surface level of committing adultery, uh, that act uh, uh, physically committing it is, is not the true meaning. The true meaning is uh, you've got to uh, get at the root of it, which before it manifests in your heart. You can't go around inwardly uh, just lusting after people. And because I didn't commit the act, I'm free. God judges the heart. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You have to have your heart pure. And, and, and what Jesus is teaching here is, is that if I am intentionally uh, just looking at women or looking at men, lusting after them to have my way after them, I am sinning. It doesn't, Jesus isn't talking about you look at a woman and it, you start to get tempted in your flesh and you start fighting that temptation. That's not what Jesus is talking about. Uh, what he's talking about you using or a person using their imagination to have their way with the individual. And, and he's saying that if you are meditating and, 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 and looking at the individual to have your way with them, uh, then that is sin that you have committed adultery with them in your own heart. And that's separate and different from you being tempted. Uh, uh, you look on a person and, and you have some evil desire in you and you're being tempted and you're fighting the temptation. That's different from what Jesus is teaching here. He's teaching about you allowing yourself. Uh, you, you're entertaining evil and lustful desires because eventually a person is going to fulfill those evil and lustful desires. Hallelujah, my God. Uh, uh, sin can't be in your heart. When lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. Jesus is teaching, get at the root of it before it grows. <laughs> my God. All right, let me move on. Thank you, Jesus. I'm only hitting the surface of these because it requires your more study, your more uh, uh, study as time goes on. But I don't have time to go into all of that. All right? Now, notice then, uh, 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 he says, uh, verse 26, Verily I say to you, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, uh, verse 27, Ye have heard, that it was said of them of old time that thou shalt not commit adultery. Verse 28, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her 
committeth adultery already in his heart. Verse 29, he says, uh, now this goes in connection to verse 28, what we just read. He says, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. Now, Jesus is not uh, promoting self-mutilation. He's using uh, this as a hyperbole, which just simply means that he's using it as an illustration. Uh, notice what he said. It is profitable for thee that uh, one of thy members should perish and uh, not uh, that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And then verse number 30, he says, if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off uh, and cast it uh, from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not thy whole body uh, should be cast into hell. So verse 29 and verse 30 are talking about the right eye and the right hand. And what he's talking about is the, uh, the, the, the rightness or the right hand and the right eye. It, it represents power. It represents authority. Uh, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God as a, as a position of power and authority. So he's saying, uh, don't allow your eye. Your, your eye is connected to your imagination, what you see. He's saying, don't let your imaginations or what you see dominate you. <laughs> My God, hallelujah. Don't allow that to dominate you. Uh, uh, cast down uh, uh, imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Uh, uh, the right hand represents deeds and, and actions. He's saying don't allow evil deeds and evil actions to dominate you. In other words, cut off evil imaginations and cut off evil behavior, evil actions, and evil deeds. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is teaching. Thank you, Lord. Now notice then, uh, verse, I hope you re-listen re to this, what we're, what we're teaching here today, uh, and let it get into your spirit. Uh, uh, verse 31, he says, it hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Uh, but I say unto you uh, that whosoever shall put away his wife, uh, saving or except for the cause of illicit uh, sexual acts, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. Now, all of this, once again, goes toward motive. It goes toward intent. So what Jesus is saying is, is that uh, in, 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 in the Old Testament, uh, they, they put away the wife. They gave the wife a, 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 a writing of divorcement. But that was never the intent of marriage with God. Uh, God, God, they were putting the women away for anything. But Jesus is saying that, that it's legal to put away a, a wife if, uh, if there's illicit sexual acts are involved. But if you do it any other way, you cause her to commit adultery. Now notice that word, adultery. Uh, adultery is illegal sexual acts before uh, the people that are married. So if I... Uh, uh, give a, a wife a, a, a writing of divorcement and it's not based on uh, fornication, uh, the divorce is not legal. And if she gets involved or marries somebody uh, it, and she goes in and have relations with that person, it, they are literally committing adultery because I am still married. We are still together. We didn't get divorced according to the law of Jesus Christ. Now, hallelujah. Now, um, notice what it says. I know Paul taught 
in uh, Corinthians, I believe it's chapter number seven, that uh, people that uh, are unequally yoked, I don't want to get into all of that, and people that, uh, uh, if, if I get saved and my wife is not saved and she isn't pleased to dwell with me, she can depart. I, I, I'm not getting into that, but I'm getting into what Jesus is talking about, about two people that are saved, that are in the kingdom. <laughs> hey, glory. Hallelujah. All right. So we see here, uh, uh, verse 33. And he says, again, ye have heard, it hath been said of them that old time, that thou shalt not forswear thyself, uh, but shall perform unto the Lord thy oaths. Now, they were, they were the, uh, the Pharisees. They, they were swearing, they were swearing frivolously, uh, saying that, uh, telling people, uh, don't swear by the temple, but swear by the gold that is in the temple. You know, they were making up statements. Uh, they were telling them, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically, uh, this is how it was. Telling people uh, they're making oaths and swearing because they didn't swear by God. They didn't say God's name. But, you know, it would be something like what people do today. They would make an oath, then cross their fingers behind their back uh, to act like the oath was null and void. So, uh, in other words, they were making commitments without true intent. Uh, and like I said, it goes to the nature of your heart. He that is pure, all things that are pure. Uh, he that is holy, everything is holy. Hallelujah. So you can't uh, uh, have ill intent uh, and call yourself pure. You can't be pure in heart but have ill intent, uh, making promises and have no intent on keeping the promises. Now notice what he says. Again, you have heard and have been said by them of old time that thou shalt not forswear thyself, but perform the oaths unto the Lord. Verse 34. He says, but I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, neither by earth, for it is uh, his footstool, uh, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. He says, neither shalt thou swear by uh, the head, because thou cannot make one hair white or black. But no notice, this is the key. Verse 37, don't be swearing. Thank you, Lord. He says, but let your communication be yea, yea, or nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. In other words, say what you mean and mean what you say. Thank you, Lord, because you are a representative of the Lord and you have to be responsible. People have to uh, be able to depend on you. So if you say you're going to do something, don't say it if you don't mean it. And don't back out of it later uh, trying to, uh, if there's no legitimate reason. Notice I didn't say excuse. I said reason. Uh, a lot of people take on job performances. A lot of people say they're going to do some things, but never do nothing. That's, that's lying. That's, that's misrepresenting. Uh, and that's not the way of the Lord. Uh, God, your God is faithful. God wants you to be faithful. Thank you, Lord. Uh, as much, I'm going to put it this way, as much as humanly possible. Yeah, I know you may have strong intent to do certain things, but other obstacles come in your way. That's normal. That's reasonable. Things like that happen. But what Jesus is after is people making oaths and people swearing with no intent on carrying it out and mis trying to misrepresent God. Hallelujah. My God. Now notice then, verse 38. It says, ye have heard, as it has been said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. <laughs> that means if you take out my eye, I'm going to take out your eye. If you take out my tooth, I'm going to take out your tooth. <laughs> but notice what he says. 
Uh, verse 39. But I say unto you that ye shall, uh, that ye, uh, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him uh, the other also. So Jesus here is talking about revenge. He's talking about don't seek revenge. Don't try to avenge yourself. Vengeance belongs to God. He will repay. He's not talking about if somebody literally hits you on your cheek. This is hyperbole again. That you don't retaliate. You don't allow people to beat you up. You, are, you have a right to defend yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for, for, for a physical confrontation. You have a right uh, to defend yourself. You have a right to defend your family. Thank you, Lord. And, and we have been mistaught that down through the years. But you have a right uh, to defend yourself and not allow people to beat you down. Not allow people to beat up on your family. You got a right. Now notice, but what he's talking about is that somebody's doing you wrong. Uh, somebody has mistreated you. That you don't turn around and try to mistreat them. Uh, uh, say, for instance, uh, somebody has talked about you or, or somebody has, has promised to do something to help you and then they withdraw their promise for no good reason. And they're withdrawing their promise to hurt you. You can't say, well, huh, uh, if they ask me for something, I'm not going to give it to them. I'm not going to help them because they mistreated me. I'm not going to help them. That's wrong. That's evil. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And those thoughts come to our mind. Hallelujah. And that's not the way of God. That's why, that's what he means by turn the other cheek. You know, uh, 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 if they mistreat you and do you wrong in that respect, don't try to get revenge by doing them wrong. Uh, two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God, this is what Jesus is saying. And now he's also going to build on this. Notice what he says. But I say unto you that you resist not evil, but whatsoever thou shalt smite thee on the uh, the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Verse 40. If any man shall sue thee at the law and take away thy cloak, let him have thy cloak also. You know, people trying to take what you have, they want to sue you. You know, you can defend yourself in the court of law, but <clears throat> he's saying, don't seek revenge. Don't try to get at him. He says, whosoever shall compel thee to go one mile, go with them too. Now notice, verse 42. Give to him that asketh of thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not away. And that verse 42 is still in the same context of getting revenge. In other words, if this person mistreated me and done me wrong, and they're coming to me to borrow something of me, I should give it to them if I got it and not try to withhold it from them to get revenge. <laughs> Hallelujah, my God. This word is good. Thank you, Lord. I should try to help them and, 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 and fulfill the scripture that talks about if your enemy hungers, give them something to eat. If he's thirsty, give them something to drink. Hallelujah, my God. We often use that scripture about anybody just coming to try to borrow from us. and um, But that's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about you withholding good from somebody that has mistreated you. And you tried to withhold that good because you're angry with them. Because you're upset with them. Hallelujah. You've got to overcome that anger. You've got to overcome that emotion and do good. <laughs> hey, you got to overcome that. My God, I'm getting excited because, because truth maketh the soul rejoice and my soul rejoiceth in the Lord. Hallelujah. Now notice what he says. Uh, 
uh, uh, verse 43. He says, Ye have heard that it hath been said that thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Uh, the Bible never tells you to hate your enemy. Uh, but they implied it because it says love your neighbor. So if I love my neighbor, then I must have to hate my enemy. God never said that in the word of the Lord. But they were teaching that false doctrine. You won't find that in the scripture about you uh, hating your enemy. <laughs> but notice what he says. But I say unto you, uh, love your enemies. See, this goes to forgiveness. This goes to not retaliating. If I'm trying to retaliate against you, there's no way I can love you. <laughs> Hallelujah. If I'm trying to hurt you and devise evil plans in my mind to get you, there's no way I can love you. Love covers a multitude of fault. Love covers a multitude of sin. It means something to be in the kingdom. I'm telling you. We don't want to miss the mark. Hallelujah. Now notice what he says. Uh, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. Don't retaliate. Don't try to get even. But bless them. Uh, do good to them that hate you. Don't try to retaliate. Uh, do good to them. Give them the money if you have it and they're asking for your help. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Pray. Notice what he says. Pray for them that does despitefully use you. Now, they're despitefully using you. You know they're despitefully using you. Huh? And you're allowing them to despitefully use you. He says, turn around and pray for them. <laughs> My God. It, that take the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As ye uh, 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 and, and, and persecute you. So they despitefully use you and they persecute you. He tells you to pray for them. Verse 45. Notice what he says. That ye may be. This is the reason or the motive behind doing this. That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. Notice the scripture. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. If you follow peace with all men and holiness, uh, uh, without which no man shall see the Lord. You've got to follow after peace. Amen? Hallelujah. You've got to be a peacemaker. Thank you, Jesus. And in order to do that, uh, you've got to suffer some wrong. Uh, people are going to mistreat you. People are going to try to abuse you. Now, I'm not telling you to be a doormat. I'm not telling you to put yourself in positions where people can use you and persecute you and, and all of that. But these things will happen to you. Uh, these things will come. Thank you, Lord. But instead of trying to get revenge, instead of trying to go after them, then you do what the word of the Lord says. You pray for them. You do good to them. Thank you, Lord. That's how you overcome evil with good. Ha! Thank you, Jesus. Now notice, verse 25. He says, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. And this reminds me of uh, James. Count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So notice, for he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Uh, God is not asking you to do anything that he's not doing himself. There's people out there that despise God, that hate God, that hate the people of God. But God still shows them love. God still shows them mercy. So people are going to hate you and do all manner of evil against you falsely for his name's sake. But you still got to show them love. You still got to show them mercy. Hallelujah. Now notice. <clears throat> Verse 46. For if ye love them that love you, what reward have you? 
That's, that's philos. If you just love, have brotherly love, uh, by God, if you just have brotherly love, what kind of love is that? You've got to have agape, <laughs> unconditional love. <laughs> Hallelujah. Notice what he says. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? They hated the publicans. Thank you, Lord. The publicans were the tax collectors that, that did the people evil because they would charge more money to line their own pockets, give, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and then pocket the rest. <laughs> Thank you, double dipping. Caesar would probably give them some money. Thank you, Lord. And they were charging other people all exuberant amounts, pocketing the rest. And he said, don't publicans do the same? Don't publicans love each other? Thank you, Lord. Now notice, verse, verse 48, he says, but be ye therefore perfect. That means mature, mature in your mind, mature in your love. Thank you, Lord. Even as your father in heaven is perfect. Now, he said, be perfect, mature. Thank you, Lord. Um, uh, be sound-minded. Uh, the worst thing an individual can do is, is, is be loved. If, if you allow me to say it this way, is um, if you are in love with an individual that is immature, and because they are immature in their love, they would take advantage of your love. Hallelujah, if you're mature, you're trying to do things right. You're trying to do things on a, an adult level. Uh, but, but that's what God is saying. He's saying, don't have immature love. Don't walk around with an immature attitude, being baby self. You know, have some mature love. Thank you, Lord. Have adult love. Have agape love one toward another. My God, we certainly do thank God for this Bible study on today. My God, I'm encouraged uh, by what Jesus is teaching us here on today. He's teaching us that it's, 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 it's not what, what, what goes in that defileth, but that which go, comes out. So he's teaching us that we've got to guard our hearts with all diligence. For all of it precedes life, the issues of life. We've got to keep our emotions in check, keep our desires in check, hallelujah, and not uh, allow our, our anger, not allow retaliation to overtake us. We, because we are the salt uh, of the earth. We are the light of the world. We are like a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. We have to walk out and live out, hallelujah, our, 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 the commands of our Lord. Why? Because we are living epistles to be read of all men. And we've got to follow peace with, and holiness. Hey, without the which no man shall see the Lord. Be encouraged today as we pray, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for this anointing. We pray, Lord, for your glory. We pray for your power. We pray for strength. We pray, Lord, that this word would find lodging in the hearts of those that are truly your disciples, that are truly seeking after thee. We pray, Lord, that you give us understanding on how to love you and to how to love other people. Hallelujah. To be just and fair, not only to the good, but be just and fair to those that hate us and want to despitefully use us. Father, in the name of Jesus, allow your glory to be made manifest. Help us to forgive those, Lord, that we have offended, those that are offended before us. Help us, Lord, not to forswear ourselves, hallelujah, but to perform the oaths that are in our heart. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you lead us and you guide us 
Ah, by your power and through that anointing. This we pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. We certainly do thank God for the Bible study on today. And I'm glad that you tuned in with us. And I pray with all my heart, amen, that you come out and be with us on this coming Sunday at 10 a.m. at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st Street, where the joy of the Lord out in the praises of God and the word of the Lord shall be your strength. Hey, hallelujah. My, I got to quote this verse. He said, they that wait upon the Lord, hey Lord, they shall renew their strength. Hey, my God. God wants to you to renew your strength. God, hey, glory. God wants you to have power. God wants you to have authority. God wants you to be the head and not the tail. God wants to manifest his greatness through you so that all people will know that there is a God, that there is a Savior, that there is a Deliverer. So I want you to be encouraged on today. Hallelujah. Lift up your mind down head and strengthen your feeble knees. Whatever you're going through, this too shall pass. Whatever you're enduring, hallelujah, cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for thee. Hallelujah, I'm talking to somebody on today. I feel it in my bones. I, I feel it in my spirit. Hallelujah, God has not forgotten about you. Hey, glory, hallelujah. So be encouraged. God, God, come on out to the house of the Lord or tune in virtually. Holly and hear a word from the Lord and the praises of our God uh, as we worship our King. Uh, and also remember to give your tithes and your offerings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Send them by way of tithely. Uh, put them in our drop box or mail them. Hallelujah. Unto the church or bring them on Sunday. My God, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be strong in the Lord. I want you to be who God has called you to be. My God, I'm loving you so much, I don't even want to let you go. Hey, hallelujah. But this joy that we have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. So God bless you. Be encouraged. Do good to anybody. Do good to everybody. Hallelujah. For God is watching you. Uh, be encouraged. God bless you in Jesus' name.